say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes in bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rang the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, oh say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home? Matthew 5, 9. This is a special verse for all of law enforcement and first responders. We hear the words, blessed are the peacemakers on special occasions. Whether it be a graduation of a law enforcement academy or when a fraternal order of police conference opens. But we also hear this verse during memorials like this one today funerals for our fallen heroes and sadly more times than not we hear this after tragedy strikes the city like it did this one a few weeks ago this verse is a part of jesus's beatitudes it is important to remember these beatitudes make up the type of person jesus wants us to turn into over time they are not traits that god is expecting us to create but what he is accomplishing within us we see Jesus use the word blessed over and over again in Matthew chapter 5. And we might think the word means happy or you've got great stuff coming to you. We associate being blessed often with being comfortable. When Jesus says you're blessed, he's not saying look at how great your life is. What he is doing is commending us. He's saying you've got it. It's the joy from God that he is pleased with our life. This expression holds a powerful meaning of divine joy and perfect happiness. Jesus was saying divinely happy and fortunate are those who possess this inward quality. But what did he mean when he said peacemaker? Throughout history, the world has had violence and anger stain it. It is easy for us to allow darkness of the world to influence us. But when the gospel does its work in you and me, the Bible says we become not peace seekers, not peace lovers, but peacemakers. Whatever situation we walk into, we bring peace. Wherever God places us, we bring peace with us. We bring a healing presence into whatever situation we are involved in. To all my brothers and sisters listening, I tell you that you are in God's plan to push back darkness and establish light. That is our mission when we put on the uniform and when we put on the badge. Please bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your many blessings. And most importantly, Lord, thank you for your grace. Father, please watch over this city. Please watch over all of our county and state police, sheriff, correction officers, probation and parole officers, and federal officers, and all of our other first responders. Father, I ask that you comfort those family members who will find out their loved ones will not be making it home today. I ask that you watch over our officers who are currently in the hospital 
and pray that Nicholas Wilt continues to progress in his recovery. I ask that today let this memorial unite us together again and everyone focus their eyes back on you. Many of us are afraid for our future generations, scared for our loved ones to go out into this conflicting world. Father, I ask that you give all of our worries and all of our anxiety to you. Like our officers who put their lives on the line each day, Lord, let us remember that we gave you, that you gave your one and only son to pay the ultimate sacrifice. A son who said, blessed are the peacemakers for they are, uh, they are children of God. A son who said, rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. Amen. Good morning again. My name is Ryan Straw. I'm the Kentucky State Fraternal Order of Police Vice President and a proud member of Louisville Metropolitan Lodge 32. It's my honor to welcome all of you here today. I want to make a special welcome to some dignitaries that are with us. Our speaker, Mayor Craig Greenberg, Reverend Elliott, thank you for being here. Command staffs of LMPD, of other police departments, our sheriff, and the families of those who are fallen. A special welcome to the Wilt family. We continue to pray for your brother and your son. When we're here, it's easy for us to sometimes forget the sacrifice of the names on that memorial. Scripture tells us that in our sufferings there is glory because we know that suffering produces perseverance, produces character, it produces hope. Sometimes the truths of these words are hard to find, especially in moments like this. Right now and the days after, our brothers and sisters on this wall and their families well, for those days, those words tested them. The people of Louisville and of Jefferson County are better for knowing them, for their service and their sacrifice. All of us who have pinned a badge on or still wear one know the dangers that lie ahead. You do not swear that oath, you do not put on that uniform without accepting that first. As we honor the memory and mourn the loss of these brothers and sisters of ours on this memorial behind me, we grieve with their loved ones. We support this community and we continue to pray for those who are fighting and we try to find some kind of meaning amidst our sorrow. For the men and women who protect and serve Jefferson County or who have spent even one day doing so, we know that each of their days started off fresh, but with challenges. Like most Americans, most of us, you get up, you spend time with your families, and you head to work. For police officers, they do that, but they also come and spend time with your families, protect your families, and they protect our community. We know of the ultimate sacrifice that can be made I encourage all of you here today, don't just spend this day remembering these officers. Don't spend just this day supporting those in uniform working to protect the community. Remember them in your prayers always. Remember their families always and appreciate what we have in this city and this county, the best law enforcement in America. I would allow, now like to invite the state trustee and federal liaison from the Louisville Metropolitan Lodge number 32, Rachel Patnode, to explain the memorial presentation and the history of our memorial. Good morning. In 1987, discussions began at the urging of then Jefferson County Attorney Michael Conliffe concerning the establishment of a permanent law enforcement officers memorial to honor the men and women who had and would sacrifice their lives for the citizens of Jefferson County. Several locations were initially considered and with the assistance of then Director Public Properties Mr. Wendell Wright, an area on the northern side of Jefferson Park was secured. The design and structure of the memorial was created and agreed upon by the local FOP presidents. Mr. Eric Anderson, the Chief Architect for Jefferson County, Mr. Wendell Wright, 
the other public officials, including Mr. Michael Conliffe. With the location and the design finalized, the local FOP lodges began raising funds for the construction from, from themselves and public supporters. Funds were set aside by public officials from their contingency accounts, and the remaining funds were acquired with the value assistance of Mr. Wright. Having exhausted their funds raising capabilities, the construction company of RB Banta Incorporated agreed to construct the memorial for the funds that had been raised at that time. The total of the funds raised were below the amount of any bids that had been tendered at that point, and yet the construction began. During the candlelight ceremony on November 25th of 1992, the memorial was dedicated and the eternal flame was lighted by Mrs. Pam Pieser, wife of slain officer Frank Pieser. Every year since the dedication, a memorial service had been, has been held during the month of May to coincide with the National Peace Officers Memorial Day each year on May 15th that was signed into law in 1962 by President John F. Kennedy. The eight FOP lodges in Jefferson County have met over the years and have decided to establish guidelines for the annual observation in an effort to maintain the memorial of those officers memorialized at the monument. For everyone who had a helping hand in the development of this beautiful memorial, we thank you. I'd, li I'd now like to invite our guest speaker, the mayor of Louisville, Craig Greenberg. Good morning, everyone. It is a honor and a privilege to be with you here today. I think I will abbreviate my prepared remarks and then circulate them uh, publicly, just so, given the weather here today. But first, a thanks to all of the FOP lodges and presidents for organizing this important event. And I did just want to start by saying a few words of about Tom Wine to express my condolences to his family, to his colleagues who are here with us today, and to thank him for his service to our community. That same sentiment applies to the people who were here to honor today and all of their families. We're coming here together this morning right after the Derby, my first Derby as mayor. And it was incredible to see our signature event from the perspective of mayor to see the wonderful time that everyone was having from around the world, not just for the Derby, but for all of our events leading up to the Derby. And everywhere that I went, I saw people enjoying themselves and I saw police officers from LMPD and other agencies in uniform and out of uniform, all focused on making sure that everyone was safe and everyone could get to where they wanted to be so that other people could create memorable experiences with their families and their friends. Experiences like that are only possible because people felt safe and were safe. And that's only possible because of the incredibly hard work of the men and women of LMPD and other law enforcement. So I want to thank everyone here today from LMPD and other law enforcement agencies, everyone across the state for all of your work on Derby Day, but more importantly, every day. We are grateful to you and all of your families and the sacrifices that you make. We saw those sacrifices on the morning of April 10th at Old National Bank. We saw that again on the evening of April 15th in Chickasaw Park. And we've seen that in far too many other places before those days and since those days. There is such uncertainty with being a police officer and you all embrace that uncertainty every day. The uncertainty is part of the job for each of you and for every officer still serving today, just as it was once true for the LMPD officers we've lost in the past 
and the officers from other agencies who are on this memorial behind us, whose names are engraved on this memorial. This important memorial, which last week some misguided individuals tried to deface. I want to be clear that my administration will continue to protect, to support, and maintain this memorial. And I'm grateful in the past year that no other names were added to this memorial. We know all too well that that could change at any time. And we know that we have officers who've come far too close to losing their lives in service to our city. Like Officer Nicholas Wilt. Four weeks ago this morning, Officer Wilt showed incredible bravery and poise in the face of danger at Old National Bank on only his fourth shift as a police officer. Today, Officer Wilt is still recovering, still fighting for his life, and we're honored to be joined by his brothers, Zach and Alex, who are here with us today. Thank you all both so much for being with us today. Please convey to your mother, to your family, and to your brother that all of us here, all of us around the city, continue to pray for his recovery, and we will continue to support him and you for as long as it takes. We were all inspired by the courage and character that he and others showed before, during, and after the morning of April 10th. And speaking of what we saw that morning, in the midst of that moment of cruelty and tragedy, we also saw selflessness and heroism from others as well, including officers Moss, Shaw, Smallwood, Montano, Denton, Lawrence, Miller, and so many others. Those who arrived just moments after officers Wilt and Galloway while shots were still being fired. They rescued Officer Wilt, brought him to safety, and gave him the fighting chance to survive that he has today. Now we're joined here today by Officers Moss, Shaw, and Smallwood. Thank you all very much for your bravery that day and every day. Your actions and the actions of your colleagues are another example of why our administration and our city will continue to support our officers. As a city, we ask so much of everyone in law enforcement. We ask you all to put your lives on the line so the rest of us can be safe. And that's why I believe and that's why I am focused on doing everything we can to support you and your families in return. Like establishing the LMPD and First Responder Comprehensive Wellness Center in partnership with the Louisville Metro Police Foundation. I want to thank Rebecca Grignan Rieker and her team for their work to support our LMPD community and their families. This wellness center will provide centralized physical therapy and rehab service as well as mental health and counseling services for officers and other first responders. We need these services. We've needed them for a long time, and we are going to make this happen. We also have to bring other resources to the table that we can do to reduce the number of crimes that you and law enforcement have to respond to. That's why we're expanding our deflection program and our group violence intervention program and making other investments at this moment in time to help LMPD become the best, to be the most trained, the most trusted, and the most transparent police department in America. And there's more that we are doing and that we have to do. We as a city, all of us, have to take on more of the responsibility for public safety. It's not fair and it's not wise just to ask police officers and your families to bear so much of the burden 
and so many of the sacrifices necessary to maintain public safety. Yes, there are things that only police officers can do. Only you, with your training, can respond to violent crimes. But we can do more to help prevent violent crimes from happening in the first place. We may never be able to prevent every crime, but we can prevent more. To do that, we are investing in the root causes of crime and in poverty, so that over the long term, fewer and fewer people will find themselves without hope, and more and more people will have the support they need to achieve their dreams. And in the short term, we should and we must make it harder for criminals to make the choices that lead to tragedy. And there are things that city government can do, and we will do them. And there are things that businesses can do, that schools, nonprofits, and houses of worships can and will do if we ask. And so, Reverend Elliott, we will continue to ask and we will continue to work with schools and houses of worships and nonprofits and businesses. And there are things that only our state lawmakers can do and that they should do reasonable, fair-minded steps that most people actually agree on. Steps that can create laws and policies that strike the same balance that you and public service and public, uh, public officers have to strike every day on the streets. The balance between protecting public safety while preserving constitutional rights. And if our police officers can do that on the streets under fire, we can do that in City Hall, in the General Assembly, and in Washington, D.C. So we will ask every lawmaker at every level to do what they can to help make Louisville a safer city, a stronger city, a healthier city. And to those of you in law enforcement, your perspective is essential in making that case. And so in the days and months ahead, we will continue talking. I will continue listening, and I will also be asking for your help because I'm committed to doing whatever we can to make our city safer, to reduce the number of homicides and shootings and the risks that you all do take and that you all face to complete your essential job. I want to make your jobs safer. I want to give you and your families as much peace of mind as possible when everyone in public life, when everyone in law enforcement heads out to begin a shift. I don't want any officer to ever be shot again. I don't want anyone, officer or civilian, to be a victim of gun violence. The work we'll be doing in the days and the months ahead is one of the ways that I want to honor the officers we've lost and to support the family and friends who mourn them to this day. May the memories of our fallen officers be a blessing. May we continue to pray for Officer Wilt's full recovery. Be careful, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other, just as you all take care of the people of Louisville every day. Thank you to everyone in law enforcement. Thank you to everyone in public service for your service, and thank you to everyone for joining us here today. Thank you very much. I'm now going to invite the Jefferson Town Police Department Chaplain Tom Dillard to offer our roll call of officers on our memorial. Thank you very much. I'd also like to invite uh, to read half of this list of those on our memorial, Officer Steve Fisher from Jefferson Town to Police to join me. John O. O'Connell, Louisville Police Department. James W. Jones, Louisville Police Department. Joseph Rosenberg, Louisville Police Department. Edward Byrne, Louisville Police Department. Joseph Hefferman, Louisville Police Department. James Purden, 
Louisville Police Department. Theodore Bosson, Louisville Police Department. Simon R. Cannon, Louisville Police Department. H. C. Connor, Jefferson County Police Department. William Murphy, Louisville Police Department. Frank Weber, Louisville Police Department. William C. Subi, Louisville Police Department. Michael Baldwin, Louisville Police Department. Harvey D. Hand, Louisville Police Department. E. H. Powell, Jefferson County Police Department. John Fowle, Louisville Police Department. Thomas Fitzgibbon, Louisville Police Department. Thomas M. Giltner, Louisville Police Department. John G. Tyler, Louisville Police Department. James E. Elder, Louisville Police Department. George G. Pfeiffer, Louisville Police Department. Oglesby C. Daly, Louisville Police Department. Ralph L. Croxton, Louisville Police Department. Peerless Stout, Jefferson County Police Department. James M. England, Louisville Police Department. Walter Vance, Louisville Police Department. Lawrence Milebag, Louisville Police Department. Frank H. Wilkie, Louisville Police Department. Thomas McNichols, Louisville Police Department. William Newcomb, Louisville Police Department. Robin E. McGowan, Louisville Police Department. John Gruber, Louisville Police Department. Basil D. Offit, Louisville Police Department. Clarence G. Rapson, Jefferson County Police Department. William Mulligan, Louisville Police Department. Edward E. Parr, Louisville Police Department. Crockett M. Riddle, Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. William D. Wood, Louisville Police Department. Saxton Dutchke, Louisville Police Department. Clarence Q. Evans, Louisville Police Department. C.M. Johnston, Jefferson County Police Department. Eugene Hagen, Louisville Police Department. Lawrence Claycomb, Louisville Police Department. Frederick Barton, Louisville Police Department. Frank Herman, Jefferson County Police Department. Walter D. Mazzi, Louisville Police Department. Louis F. Fowler, Louisville Police Department. Vaughn R. McClellan, Louisville Police Department. William K. Burge, Louisville Police Department. Thomas W. Kinney, Louisville Police Department. James L. Hedgepath, Louisville Police Department. William P. Bryant, Louisville Police Department. Walter C. Wise, Jefferson County Police Department. Alden Legrand, Louisville Police Department. John H. Hawthorne, Louisville Police Department. Andrew Miller, Louisville Police Department. Chester Corfidge, Jefferson County Police Department. John H. Tennyson, Louisville Police Department. Ezra Sullivan, Jefferson County Police Department. John Arthur Lawson, Sr., Louisville Police Department. John P. Minogue, Louisville Police Department. Alvin L. Cowan, Jefferson County Police Department. Henry E. St. Clair, Jefferson County Police Department. Edward Nowakowski, Louisville Police Department. William Long, Louisville Police Department. Orville Trinkle Jr., Louisville Police Department. Delmore Whitworth, Jefferson County Police Department. Cosby Witted, Jr., Louisville Police Department. James F. Sansbury, Louisville Police Department. William F. Meyer, Louisville Police Department. Joseph L. Price, Louisville Police Department. Earl Bertram, L Jefferson County Police Department. Donald Gaskin, Louisville Police Department. James Ratliff, Louisville Police Department. Wilbur Hayes, Louisville Police Department. John Schaefer, Louisville Police Department. Raymond Euler, Jr., Louisville Police Department. Tommy Ray, Louisville Police Department. Jonah D. Cox, Louisville Police Department. Armand Van Cleve, Shively Police Department. Michael T. Smith, Jefferson County Police Department. Mark W. Hines, Jefferson County Police Department. Gwendolyn Downs, Louisville Police Department. Kenneth R. Nally, Jefferson County Police Department. 
Albert Sealy, Sally, Jr., Louisville Police Department. Christopher Dunn, Jefferson County Police Department. Ronnie E. Salee, Louisville Police Department. Ricky LaFollet, Louisville Police Department. Michael B. Green, Jefferson County Corrections Department. John Weiss, Shavley Police Department. Jack S. Dozier, Jefferson County Police Department. Alton P. Embry, Jr., Louisville Police Department. Franklin Peischer, Jr., Jefferson County Police Department. Floyd W. Cheeks, Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. Gregory Hands, Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. Brandon H. Thacker, Alcohol Beverage Control. Ray B. Franklin, Department of Charitable Gaming. Peter A. Grignon, Louisville Metro Police Department. Bobby W. Branham, Louisville Metro Police Department. Nicholas A. Rodman, Louisville Police Department. Deidre I. Magandolt, Louisville Metro Police Department. Martez K. Hughes, Louisville Police Department. Hassan F. Hassan, Louisville Metro Police Department. Brandon A. Shirley, Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. Richard Longoria, Louisville Metro Corrections Department. Zachary D. Cottingham, Louisville Metro Police Department. I'm gonna invite the Kentucky State Fraternal Order of Police Chaplain and member of Deputy Sheriff's Lodge 25, Larry Bush, to sing our old Kentucky home. While he does that, I'll invite the Jefferson Town Honor Guard to place upon our plaque the memorial wreath. Once that is complete, I invite uniformed officers, families of our fallen and dignitaries to come forward, take a carnation and place it at the foot of our memorial. Brother Bush. Oh, the sun shines bright on my old Kentucky home. Tis summer, the people are gay. The corn tops ripe and the meadows in the bloom, while the birds make music all the day. The young folk Oh, merry, all oh, happy and bright. By and by, hard times come and knock it at my door. Then my old Kentucky home tonight. Weep no more, my lady. Oh, weep no more. We will sing one song for my old Kentucky home, for my old 